Jay Haynes for the Film Sensei YouTube channel. Today in this video, I'm going to build this project file of extruded text with partially reflected tile floor. So as you can see, I've done this in several different ways, just to give you an idea of how different textures uh, look when you add them to this project file. The process for doing this is always the same. So if you follow along, then you'll be able to do it for yourself with whatever textures you decide you wanted to use. All right, so I am going to make a new composite shot and I'm just going to make it 10 seconds long and I'm going to add a text layer and I'm gonna type in my text and I can do a little bit of adjustments on that. Maybe change the size and adjust the font there a little bit. Okay. Um, now what I want to do is I want to bring in my letters texture. And then I'm going to add a set matte effect to it. And I'm going to source the text. I will turn off the text and you can see that uh, I have essentially cut out the text out of um, that uh, texture. I'm going to go ahead and highlight both of those and pre-compose them as it were. Right click and say make into a composite shot. This will be the graphic. And then I will click OK. In the main composite shot, I'm going to go ahead and make this into a 3D plane. So I'm going to right click or I'm going to left click on this icon and hit 3D plane. It automatically adds a camera in my version of hit film because I have uh, selected that. Um, if it does not automatically add a camera in your version, then it will ask you, do you want to add a camera? And if you say no, then you're done with this tutorial. So you will want to say yes, because you always will want to say yes. You might as well just say, yeah, don't even ask me. Okay. Let's go ahead and move the camera into place. I'm going to open up the transform properties and just lift the camera up a bit. Maybe come in slightly tipping the forward camera down on the X axis. I think that looks pretty good. Okay. Let's add a new point and we're going to make that a 3D point. And I'm just going to rename that by hitting the F2 key. Um, camera control. And I think I almost spelled that right. Hold on. There we go. And let's parent the camera to the parent camera control. And so now if I open up the transform properties of the camera control, I can rotate the Y axis number and my camera sort of circling around. So let's go from about 25 and I will go ahead and set keyframing. I will move the playhead to the end of our timeline and I will just change that number to say negative 25. So now basically that is just going to rotate that way. All right, let's go ahead and create the extrusion effect. What I want to do first is create another new point which I will also make three-dimensional. I'll bring it down here and hide it because I won't actually need to see it. But I'm going to rename that point focal. And it will act as my focal point. It is not in the right place, so I'm going to move it. Basically, I'm going to push it back in space. How far back in space, you ask? Way back. Let's go about one million pixels back in space. So it is way back there. And that's going to act as my focal point. The graphic, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate it. And the second one, I will put below the first one and I will rename the second one, the 3D extrusion. And I'm only renaming these things because I want to make sure I know what's what when I'm working here. Opening that up, I'm going to use a couple of effects. One is the zoom blur effect. And I'm going to drop that onto the 3D extrusion layer, opening it up under center. I'm going to use the focal point layer. And then I can set this strength any number I like. I'm going to go negative 10, uh, but I could go negative 100. OK, all the way up to negative 100. I'm going to go negative 10. I think that's probably good. So you can sort of see how that is looking a little bit 3D. Now, there's to solidify that in, there's a couple of things that we can do. One is we can use a neon glow effect and mess with those settings. And if I were to do that, it would look like this. I would drop this on here, open this up. Uh, I would take the radius and the expansion down to zero, up the intensity. 
and then change the value to about 15 or so. Okay, and that doesn't look too bad. Uh, so that's one way to do it. The other way to do it, it would be to use a crush blacks and whites uh, alpha effect and just change the opaque number to 0 0.01. Now, I would like for that to be a little bit darker than the front side. So I'm going to add a brightness and contrast effect to it. This is purely, you know, to taste. And I'm just going to knock the brightness down about 20 or so, just so that there's a little bit more of a definition between the face and the side of it. And I think that that actually looks pretty good. I think that that actually looks pretty good. So I'm going to stay with that. Either way that you do it, you're going to have a little bit of a me, 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 me on the top of some of these letters. Uh, just like a little, it's not artifacting, but it's just a little waviness to them. Um, and you know, one way or another, you're going to kind of have to live with it. This is, we're, we're, we're basically taking effects in hit film express that weren't really ever meant to be doing what we're doing and we're making them work. And so it does, it is giving us a little bit of a, you know, of, of a wonkiness to it. So now we're going to add in the tile floor. You can see that this tile floor is the light tiles only. And you're maybe wondering how I created this. So this is how I did it. So I went outside and I took different pictures of different things. I took a picture of my driveway. I took a picture of my street and I took a picture of my internet box and uh, you can see I actually had some shadows in there. Well, that was really smooth. At any rate, we're going to go ahead and create a composite shot. And this composite shot is actually going to be 1920 by 1920. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring in a picture of my uh, street here. And what I want to do is just sort of cover only that piece right there. Okay. Um, now I'm going to create a new composite shot it'll be the same size and i want to drag in that first composite shot uh, but i'll open it up transform and make it 50 percent then if i use the layout panel i can very quickly move that composite shot up to the upper left hand corner and if i were to duplicate it then i can move the other one down to the lower right hand corner and then i would add a gray layer to this and under effects i will look for the tile and drop that tile on there. And now I've got a basically tile floor. What I'm gonna do is just adjust this number to 20%, which basically means I have 10 squares by 10 squares. Notice that these black ones are transparent. They're not actually black, they're transparent. So I go ahead and export this frame as my tile floor. Then I'll go ahead and bring in my um, asphalt picture, put that in here and kind of take whichever version of that that I want, maybe about right there. That looks pretty good. Um, I think I want it to be a little bit darker, so I'm just going to go ahead and add a brightness and contrast effect to it and maybe uh, just sort of take that down a little bit. Yeah, something like that. Let's go with that. I could increase that. Yeah, okay. And then I'll export that frame as my dark tiles. Then finally, I want to go ahead and create a new composite shot that will actually be the 1920 by 1080. And I'll bring in the picture of my um, cable box there. I kind of like that look there. Maybe I'll leave that. Maybe I'll... Uh, I could use a curves on this, perhaps, but I think just... Uh, you know, something along those lines. And I'm just going to go ahead and export this frame as the uh, letters texture. So I'm going to take my tile floor and bring it in and put it here. I'm going to make it a three-dimensional plane. And then if I open up the transform properties of it, I can go ahead and just rotate the x-axis 90 degrees. So now I have this the light tile sitting on here. And now I'm just going to bring in the dark squares and... I will drop that in here, make it three-dimensional, open up the transform properties again, and rotate it 90 degrees. And because I made them all the same, they actually match. And the 
You can see the dark tiles underneath the light tiles. I can go and turn off the floor planes now by clicking on this little icon. And you can get an idea of how those are, are looking there, okay? And they look pretty good. So now we can isolate the reflections in just the dark tiles because we have only the dark squares, uh, you know, shining through. And so if I were to open up or search for reflections, then under the graphic, I could say, tick on the cast reflections. And under the 3D extrusions, I could say cast reflections. And then under the dark squares, I could say receive reflections. And you can see that it's only shining through to the dark squares. Now I'm going to knock the specular reflectivity down to about 50% because I think that will look a little better. It's nice and subtle there. That looks just lovely. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and turn on uh, or actually, we're going to light this scene. So let's add a light. And this will really mess everything up. I'm going to call this the uh, key light. And I'm just going to move it into position. So maybe negative 2,000 pixels, which means it'll be 2,000 pixels to the left. Uh, 2,000 pixels high and 2,000 pixels in front of the lettering. Um, and then I will duplicate that light. Control D, and I'm going to rename that one the fill light. And I will just open this up under the transform properties. If I hit down, hit the control key and just click on something, it will change the sign of it. So now it's 2000 pixels to the right. And now if I duplicate it one more time, uh, I can go ahead and create a backlight. So I will rename it backlight. And again, if I open that up, transform properties, and I hold down the control key and click on the Z axis number, it pushes it back 2000 pixels instead of forward. All right now I have, uh, it's overexposed because I have three lights. So I'm going to open up the intensity properties of each of those. The key light, I'll make 50. And tabbing down to the uh, fill light, I'll make that about 30. Tabbing down to the backlight, I'll make that about 20. And so now those add up to about 100, and that'll pretty much light the scene properly, I think. And I think at this point, I'm going to go ahead and save my project file. So you can see I have now saved this as project file, and your policy should always be save early and save often. Now I can go ahead and add in the shadows. So S-H-O-A-D, right? Just a little bit of... Uh, uh, keying it in will show me, and I'm going to go ahead and tick on the cast shadows for the key light and the fill light and also the backlight. And then I'm going to come down here and under the graphic, I'm going to say cast shadows. And under the um, 3D extrusion, I'm going to say cast the shadows as well. And so now the shadows are being cast all over the place and that helps the realism a lot. Um, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and add in the, um, the, the lens flare. So I will, first I'm going to save control S will do that. And now I will say, add a new layer, a plain layer, make sure, sure it's black and click. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and rename that plain layer uh flare so i hit the f2 key flare and i am going to search for the lens flares or light flares i should say and drop it on that plane i am going to open up the light flares hotspot position and i will zero out the position and then i will say use layer backlight so it will put it up here where the black backlight is. And even as the camera moves, then the flare will move. Can't really see much of the flare. So I'm going to go ahead and up the intensity to two. And I'm going to adjust the scale to a nice, healthy 1500 JJ Abrams size. When I have done that, I can go ahead and right click on the flare plane and change the blend mode to add. So that it is simply adding the flare and not the plane itself. Ah, it looks lovely. Okay, the last thing that needs to happen is we're going to go ahead and add in the uh, three-dimensional texturing, which we will do through the parallax effect. 
I will take the parallax effect and first I'm going to drag it onto the graphic itself. Opening that up, I think I will just knock the depth map down to about 10%. And I think I will go ahead and copy that and I will apply it or, or paste it to the tiled floor. And I think I will also paste it to the dark squares. And now when we're all said and done, we have something that looks like this. Now, if you own HitFilm Pro, then you can bring in three-dimensional models and you can really, really get some nice results. And I will be doing a tutorial in the future on how to create this 3D model in Blender and then bring it into HitFilm to give yourselves some amazing looking graphics. In the meantime, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Like and subscribe if you like this kind of thing. And hey, thanks for watching.